Right now, you will be surrounded by metal. Your phone, tablet and computer all rely on metals. This building going up behind me relies on metal. Producing metals takes a lot of energy. Each of the atoms in the metal is not in its natural physical state. It's the equivalent to pushing a large boulder up a hill. It takes a lot of energy to get it there, and when it's on the top, it might be stable and stay where it is. But one small push and that boulder can stop rolling down the hill and be very difficult to stop. NACE, a world body on corrosion, estimate that developed countries spend around 3% of their GDP repairing or preventing metal corrosion each year. In the UK, that comes to around 50 billion pounds. Seems incredible, right? But how long would it take you to find a corroded piece of metal right now? An old barbecue? Car? What about this statue? So what actually happens when metals corrode? Well, metals make great conductors. That means they're great at transferring energy and electrons between atoms in the metal. That's why they're perfect for making electronics and cookware. Metals can react with water to form metal hydroxides and hydrogen gas. Acids can react with metals, like these nails, to form hydrogen gas and salts very readily. It all comes down to how readily metals will give up their electrons. We can use volts to measure the transfer of electrons between the metal and the solution, and each metal will have a different value. Think of it as how readily a metal can take an electron from solution and be reduced. This is known as the reduction potential. Here, I've got some nice shiny pieces of zinc. I'm going to add them to this beaker of copper sulfate solution. The zinc will become dull and the bright blue copper sulfate solution will lose its colour over time. The copper ions in solution are taking electrons from the zinc metal. As the copper ions do this, they become metallic themselves and deposit onto the surface of the zinc metal. We can make a circuit out of this reaction using an electrochemical cell. Here's one I made earlier. By connecting a piece of zinc to a piece of copper with a wire, we can use a voltmeter to measure the difference in their reduction potentials. This electrochemical cell has copper in copper sulfate solution and zinc in zinc sulfate solution. The two beakers are connected by a salt bridge. This is a piece of filter paper soaked in saturated sodium chloride. It allows electrons to be conducted from beaker to beaker, but doesn't allow the zinc or the copper ions to cross. We can use a voltmeter to measure the difference in the reduction potentials of the two metals. Copper has a reduction potential of positive 0.34 volts, while zinc has a reduction potential of negative 0.76 volts. So we should be measuring the difference, which is positive 1.1 volt. The zinc metals in the electrode are giving up their electrons to become charged ions and dissolve in solution. The copper, having a more positive reduction potential, is taking electrons from the solution to turn its copper ions into copper atoms, which are deposited onto the surface of the electrode. So hopefully you've seen that metals can be stable when in contact with the right conditions, or corrode when in contact with the wrong conditions. Metal atoms can lose electrons to become ions and dissolve into solution, which can wear away metal products, leaving them weak, crumbling, and in need of restoration. Metal ions in solution can gain electrons to become atoms and then deposit onto the surface of a container. If you're interested in making some Christmas decorations, look up silver mirror reactions.